1. I'm a corrections officer in the Deep South, and I just entered my seventh year working in my facility. I've always been semi-religious, but nothing serious. Just your typical small-town church kind of thing. However, I work in a big city jail, and I've had some major things happen over the years that didn't really make me think ghosts, but is creepy nonetheless. Especially working overnights. 8 p.m. till 6 a.m. It's dark, silent. You're alone most of the time. Plus, you're usually a little drowsy, so I always chalked it up to that. Some of these small experiences include random footsteps from around my control room, when all inmates are locked down. Voices in places that are no longer in use. However, this isn't about any of those minor experiences I just mentioned. It's about this encounter and experience. From around a week ago, I've talked to a couple of close friends, and some guys at work, and... We can't seem to figure it out. And I've tried to wrap my mind around this the best I can, but I'm honestly at my wit's end. So, might as well post it on the internet to see what sticks, or if someone can perhaps help me reason with whatever happened. For context, the floor I work is typically a floor reserved for mid-security violent inmates. This would include robbery suspects, domestic violence, assault, etc. Typical night for me is to come in and lock down all inmates for the night, and then conduct what we call a standing headcount. Basically, I come in and put eyes on every inmate on the floor. If my roster says I have 170 inmates, I have to physically count 170 inmates. Well, the facility is currently undergoing modernization upgrades. This includes new doors, locks, day space, tables, furniture, and most importantly, cameras. On my floor, all pods are full to capacity except for C-Block. This pod is currently locked out, meaning no inmates are to be housed in the pod until all upgrades are done and in place. They've been working on it for about three weeks now. They've put in all new doors, locks, and cameras. The camera feeds are shown on a small screen inside the control room of the floor with their cell number placed in the bottom right corner of each cell. So I shouldn't have to worry about counting in C-Block, as there are no inmates in C-Block. Well, one week ago, after finishing my headcount, I come back to the control room and do my usual routine. Pull up Chrome and just browse the internet until I have to do my hourly check to make sure no one is committing self-die. Around midnight, on the 2nd of May, 2023, I finish doing another check and sit down in the control room. As I go to sit down, I take a quick glance around at the screen with all the cameras. In C-Block, 4 cell, I swear I saw a person standing in the center of the cell, facing outward towards the door of the cell. I do a double take. And, of course, nothing is there. Okay, maybe I saw someone in B-Block standing in their cell, and the camera froze for a second, no big deal. About 30 minutes later, I sit up in my chair as I'm putting my phone down. This time, again, I see someone standing in C-Block 4 cell. And this time, I know that it's that cell because I'm looking at the number. The cell door is wide open, as are all the doors in C-Block. So it's for sure that cell. I full tilt sprint into that block and look up into cell 4, nothing and no one. I begin to think that I'm seeing things or the camera is somehow fucking up. I put in a report to our electronic maintenance department. They say they'll look into it. I come back the next night and the report states all wiring is fine and the camera feed is in fact linked to C block for cell. After going home and thinking about it, I convinced myself that I was wrong somehow, that it was just me being tired. Again, same process comes and goes, lockdown, headcount, back to control room to wait. I'm now glancing every once in a while at C-Block 4 cell. Nothing appears. Midnight comes and goes. I think, oh yeah, it was me, no big deal. Well then, 2am rolls around and again... I do my check, sit down, back in the control room. Again, all doors in C-Block are all the way open. And these doors are not light. 
their big metal doors easily 60 to 70 pounds. That's when C-Block Forcell slams shut. Then after it is shut and not locked, it sounds like it's starting to be kicked by a horse. Like someone slammed it shut right on the back end of a full-grown horse. I look on the camera screen and all the cameras in that pod are just blinking on and off. I go into the cell block and as I'm going up the stairs towards the door, more doors start to shut from six, five, three, two, one. At this point, I'm done. I ran out of that block, shut the door, and call for a supervisor in maintenance. We check the footage of the event on the supervisor's computer in his office, and of course, none of them show anything. At around the 2 a.m. mark, they all just go to no connection with our local server at the HQ building across the street. Maintenance did say it was definitely not the lock, but it did look like someone had tried to kick that door off its hinges because the doorframe itself had chipped paint after having just freshly been painted. I've scoured incident reports back five years and I can't find anything about any violent deaths or just anyone dying in general on this floor. That being said, my department has sealed reports in the past where if you're under an LT, you won't be able to read the report. So I'm not sure. I'm still working on this floor. They are on the last few days of fixing up C-Block. And then they'll move to D-Block. They still have three more blocks after D-Block to do. So I'm a little concerned of what'll happen once those are empty and not in use. Things in C-Block seem to have calmed down as nothing major has happened since last week. Doors still move and I've had two shut. But not like that night a week ago. I've put in for a vacation towards the end of May. So I'm hoping time away is going to help. And hopefully it'll be a fix. But this has turned me from a non-believer to skeptic on the low end of a possible believer on the high end. I just don't think the AC could blow a 60-pound door shut, nor could it cause the door to be hit that violently. If anyone has a similar experience or has any ideas, please let me know. 2. Hey, I am a 20-year-old male with no medical issues, except for occasional sleep paralysis. Also try to always brush off things with logical reasoning rather than instantly subscribing to the paranormal. Hence why some of my reactions to things are probably nonchalant. I had these weird experiences consisting of a little girl's spirit or some shit. I don't know. Kind of been brushing them off until recently. I'd like some information on what it can possibly be, since it's just honestly really weird at this point. I've also had sleep paralysis, but I understand that isn't paranormal, and I've never thought about it that way until I started connecting the dots. My first time having sleep paralysis was around the age of 12. I just remember being in bed, having my back face the wall, but there being enough space for, let's say, another person to lay behind me. I remember opening my eyes and not being able to move at all. Typical sleep paralysis. Then followed with the feeling that the bed space behind me got pressed down by something laying down, followed with a second or two to pause. Then a girl laughing or speaking. Maybe both, I can't remember. I woke up and was super freaked out, but I found out through a relative that was sleep paralysis. My first encounter with somebody else also being there was when I was around 15 or 16. Mom and I were upstairs talking in the hallway, and then we heard a strange little girl laugh. We both instantly stopped and looked to where it had came from. Now, it wasn't weird that we heard one laugh. We have a pretty active neighborhood with kids playing outside all the time. What was weird was that it sounded like it came from the bedroom over, my mom instantly was like, the window was probably open. And then we went to check. Yep, it was closed. Check the rest of the rooms and they were closed. Whatever, weird, it happens. Now, nothing super weird like that happened, except for maybe an instance or two where my grandma and I would be the only people in the house, and we would be downstairs, and it sounded like somebody would be walking back and forth upstairs. 
chuck that up to floorboards creaking, unsettling, etc. Grandma would say, don't talk about it, which was probably the most creepy part about any of that. I almost forgot about this part. While sleeping in bed that night, I'd have my water bottle on the floor next to my bed. I blindly reached out to pick it up and put it back. Funnily enough, my hand would always seem to hit something else down there while blindly grabbing around for a water bottle. I check a couple of times, but that happened at least over 20 times, I'd say. Where I just reach for it or put it back, boom, hit something. Then sometimes looking over like WTF. I cannot explain why the fuck it didn't bother me, but it really bothers me now thinking about it. Now this is what fucks with me a lot. This happened about two years ago. It was around midnight, and I was laying in bed on my phone. Now the end of my bed is towards my door, so there is a lot of open space between there. Anyways, I'm just watching vids and just switch sides while on my phone. So normally you would just switch sides and there'd be no issue. Flip over to my other side and all that. As I'm switching sides, though, something hits my foot. I'm really confused at this point and look over towards my feet, using my phone screen as a light. Nothing's there. No fear or panic hit me, just really confused. Happens again about 30 minutes or so later. Still confused. I chalk these up to be like hallucinations or something. About a week or two later, same story, on my phone, around midnight, and I switch sides and something tags my foot again. This time I immediately look over, kind of annoyed on what it is, and I see a figure like a small black bar. I don't know, just some small black figure going down. I'm really confused now. I set up thinking like what is going on, then go back to my phone. Switch side is 30 minutes or so later and then boom, happens again. Immediately sit up and look over with my phone and see like a fucking head or eyes. Look pretty disturbing thinking about it. It was pretty white and I can't remember if it had long hair or not. But it was just the top half of the head. And just goes down. Now for some reason I did not care. I'm more freaked out typing this out right now and recollecting what happened than in that moment. I remember just thinking, bro, what the fuck? Like, just absolutely confused, speechless, starstruck. Like, I wasn't freaking out or anything, but just so weirded out on what I saw. Every time I think about it, it really freaks me out. But I don't know why I didn't give an absolute shit in the moment. 3. Hello, everyone. I've worked in the funeral industry for six years. It's corporate, so they have a local care center that services eight individual funeral homes and two cremation societies. I think our average is close to 4,000 bodies a year. I've dabbled in embalming and directing, but most of my experience has been what they call a removal tech. Basically, I go and pick up the bodies from hospitals, facilities, homes, etc., and bring them back to the care center when I log them into storage. My one and only paranormal experience was about a year into starting the job. I get chills even thinking about this because shortly after it happened, I was telling the story to some friends, and the same phenomenon happened again. So it was a typical workday. I worked the night shift and would be on call from 5 p.m. to 8 a.m. Yes, it's very long hours, but I enjoyed it immensely. Plus, I'm very much a night person. I received a first call for a residential home in the area. The deceased was a woman in her late fifties. The director who took the call first had added notes saying to be extra careful because the family was distraught. I arrived at the home and spoke to the daughter and son. The deceased had died in the back room and had fallen against the door. The woman was fairly obese, 320 pounds, and the fire department had to break the door to the bedroom down to get her. After assessing the situation and going over paperwork with the family, I explained that we would not be able to get the gurney into the room. Small hallways and tight corners are a nightmare for us in this industry. I explained I would have to set the gurney up in the living room and bring the deceased out to the gurney 
and advised the family to step outside while me and my partner moved the body. It was a typical day at work so far. We got a sheet under the body and drug her out into the living room. I had set up the gurney in the middle of the room and right above us was a chandelier. We lifted her up and onto the gurney. The moment she was square on the gurney, the light bulb went out above us. I did not feel cold or scared. I didn't have any negative or scary vibes. Me and my partner just looked at each other. I had a sense that this was some sort of communication. Almost like this woman was watching us and screamed out when we placed her body on the gurney, seeing and accepting that she was in fact dead. My partner and I drove back to the care center and logged in the case without anything else happening. We both were stunned and had no explanation for the light. A month later, I was visiting some friends and told them the story. We were all sitting outside, having drinks. When I got to the light going out, I snapped my finger, accentuating how the exact moment she was on the gurney the light had gone out. Guys, when I snapped my finger, all the little plastic lawn lights went out. I honestly couldn't believe it. Since then, nothing else has happened, and I have told the story to other people with no paranormal activity. Did this woman stay with me for that month, or was this another spirit? Out of the thousands of bodies I've picked up and crazy situations I've been in, I've never had anything like this happen before. It just makes you wonder what's really out there. When I had asked the daughter to step outside, she initially declined and had said she'd lost three loved ones in this house and her mother would be the fourth. I thought this was odd, and she didn't expand on this. When we began prepping the gurney with plastic, the family did decide to step out, however. I did not make this upcoming connection until days later, after talking to family members about my experience. The chandelier above us had many bulbs, maybe seven to ten. I do distinctly remember a few bulbs already out when I looked up initially. Days after remembering what the daughter had said, I want to say that there were three out when we first walked in. That would make four out when we left the home. Very eerie indeed. Four. I'm going to start this off by saying that this post is completely legitimate. This is not fiction. This is something real that I have experienced. My hope for sharing this experience on the internet is that I can find someone else who has witnessed the same thing as me. Or something similar. As I have been searching for answers for years. Also, maybe someone can give me some insight on what this could be. I don't expect anyone to truly believe what I'm writing. I know it is unbelievable, but I know my truth. This experience is something that changed my life completely. I also would like to note that during my life I have had lots of paranormal and spiritual experiences. I don't consider myself a religious person, but I believe in God. I've witnessed too many miracles and things not to believe. When I had this experience I was 18, I am now 22. One night years ago I was hanging out with my now ex-boyfriend. It was either November or December 2019. We decided that night we wanted to look at the stars. It was very cold out and probably around 1 a.m., but that didn't ever stop us from going outside. We put on extra layers, grabbed a blanket, and laid out to look at the stars. Most of the night we were having fun, laughing, and talking. There was this one point where our conversation got very serious. He started explaining to me that he didn't believe in God or anything at all. He believes nothing will happen when we die. My response to that was, I respect his beliefs, but I believe in God. I know something will happen when we die. I have witnessed too many spiritual things in my life not to believe. I've always had a knowing that something more is out there. His only response was, once he sees something, he'll believe it. We were quiet for a while after that, but eventually continued talking about other things and having fun. And that's when I saw something in the sky. What I saw was a massive pair of wings gliding directly above me. 
It was at least 18 to 20 feet. I couldn't make out a head, legs, or tail. Just a massive pair of wings. It was dark and hard to see, but the wings had a subtle glow, just enough for me to see it. It almost looked see-through, but also glowing. Can't be sure, though. It was a shocking thing to see. I wasn't necessarily horrified, but I was in complete awe. I didn't feel anything negative. My ex wasn't paying attention at first. I shouted at him to look up. When he did, he immediately started panicking. He was swearing and freaking out. The pair of wings weren't there for long. It just flew above us, then above my house and seemed to disappear or just faded into the darkness. As it was flying, it only flapped its wings once, so really it was gliding. My ex had grabbed me and insisted we go inside. He was horrified. We didn't get much sleep that night. Eventually, the next day after calming down, we decided we wanted to go out at night again and see if anything else happens. There was a lot more that happened. I won't get into too much detail about. We saw strange UFOs and two big bright lights that appeared to be close to us. So bright that it was hard to see. That itself was very scary and unusual, but the strangest thing was the winged being. After this happened, my perspective on life changed completely. There is so much out there that we don't know about. Not that it's related, but weird things started happening around the world too. Covid, Ukraine, Chinese spy balloon, so much more. There is just so much happening. I've searched and talked to so many people to see if maybe they experienced something similar, but can't find much information. I do believe that maybe what I saw was an angel, or could be an interdimensional being. I'm not sure. I don't think I'll ever know for sure, I've accepted that. Again, as unbelievable as it sounds, this is something real that has happened to me and my ex-boyfriend. Feel free to tell me your thoughts. Hopefully this reaches someone who witnessed something similar. 5. When I lived in the southeast, sometimes we, my parents, partner, and two dogs, decided to evacuate before an incoming hurricane hit. On one occasion, in either 2004 or 2005, we ended up at an older hotel that was very unique, to say the least. As the weather ramped up, and we ended up more in the storm than we'd planned, it was a bummer we wouldn't get to explore the area. But I was also happy to have a sturdy building that had survived a lot. We were advised to avoid the areas with lots of windows as the winds picked up. I was fine with that. I've always loved curling up with a good book, and this was no exception. I decided to take a quick shower while the dogs were out on a pee break with my dad and partner before dinner. We were in an interior room that seemed a little boring for the hotel, but spacious and clean with two queen beds and a very unique older bathroom. I got in the shower and for some reason reached for a towel only to realize the towels were still on the bed, not in the bathroom like a hotel would normally have them. I chastised myself for forgetting them so far away and the inevitable wet walk across the room that would follow. When I turned off the shower, I tried to squeeze out and minimize the amount of water on my body for the wet trek across the carpet. So, when I get out of the shower and saw one towel, I just couldn't figure out how one towel from the four got there. I don't know if I just said it to myself or it just popped in my head, but I immediately thought something like, Nice ghost, still looking after people. But then rationality prevailed and I thought my partner must have come back to the room while I was showering and somehow snuck in without me feeling a draft or pressure change from the door opening. Very unlike him to say nothing when doing something to help me, but whatever. I needed a towel, and I had one. When he came back, I thanked him for noticing that I would need it. He had no idea what I was talking about, saying it was hell for he and my dad to get the dogs to go to the bathroom in the weather. He certainly didn't have time to run back just to bring me a towel. I was momentarily confused, but I realized my mother had a room key, 
and maybe she'd popped over to say hello. She is that kind of thoughtful, but would always let me know before coming into the bathroom unannounced. We met my parents for dinner downstairs, and I asked my mom if she'd stopped by. She said no. She was zonked out after preparing the house for the storm and the drive. That's the first time it hit me that it wasn't any of the people I thought it was. I looked around at the understaffed hotel employees hustling just to keep us fed and relatively happy. I just wasn't seeing it being one of them. Sure, if it was slower, maybe someone would have had the time to go through people's rooms and whatnot. But they were in the off-season. These smelled like seasoned employees, and would they really sneak into a room without taking anything valuable? Risk getting caught by putting a towel in the bathroom like that? As nice as it was getting a towel when I needed one, I just wasn't feeling that great about staying in that room. During dinner, the idea of trying to sleep in a place where things could move like that, I was a little worried about what would happen when we turned the lights off. I wasn't looking for that kind of experience when we literally had nowhere else to go. Roads were flooding locally, and travel of any kind was not advised. When we went back to the room, I was explaining my concerns to my partner, when all of a sudden water started pouring through a leak in the ceiling. We called out to the front desk. Maintenance came by and they made the decision for us. We would not be staying in that room. We were upgraded to a very fancy but old-style room. Initially, I was worried that it might have more issues, but nothing else happened for the rest of our stay other than really bad weather and a brief power outage. Before we left a few days later, we finally got to have breakfast outside and enjoy some of the exterior beauty of the property. I really wished it wasn't so damaged. It just felt like a really special place. In fact, years later I thought about returning when it wasn't hurricane season and we were a bit less stressed. But when I looked it up online, I remember it being closed and rumored to be headed for demolition. Sadly, it's now a boutique hotel and condos, but I will always remember one thing. Their excellent service. Everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Paranormal Stories, episode 329. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Before you go, if you'd be so kind, press the like button. Boop it, poke it. Whatever gets it to give that kind of thummy up kind of response would be great. I would appreciate it. Uh, if you want to. You don't really have to, but, you know, it's, it's there. It's there to be booped. Anyway, let's see. Uh, no other business, so let's move right along to Hellfreezer's question of the day. And today's question is... This one comes thanks to Ryluge is, would you do nighttime security in a haunted location alone? And I probably would. If they let me have my phone or um, some sort of internet device with me to keep me entertained. Because as long as the ghosts don't bother me, I'm not going to bother them. You know, just keep their activity to themselves. Don't mess with the guy who's just trying to get paid. Let me know what you think in a comment below. And with that, I'm going to head off for now. I'm going to make these videos. I'm going to get some food. I'm going to wiggle my toes. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves. <laughs>